Okay, now we're going to take what we've learned and we're going to put it into a logger class that we can reuse in other projects. To do this, we need to start by, well, you guessed it, making an actual class. And let's call this uh, the ever descriptive logger. Why not? Now we're going to do logger a little bit different. First thing we're going to do is add some includes. Of course, we're going to need queue debug for this. We also need queue file, queue date time. And queue dir. Along with uh, IO stream. All right, now that we have our class, we're going to make some static items in here. Darn you, case sensitivity. You strike again. All right, so we're going to make a function now called attach. This will allow us to attach the message handler to the static parts of this class. And when I say static parts, it's because we're going to do 99% of this statically, so we don't have to make an instance of it. It makes it much, much easier to work with. And I'm just going to copy and paste in our handler here. Notice how it has the same signature. Let's go ahead and add these definitions in. All right, now, because we're working statically, we need to set these variables, and we cannot do this in the constructor. So this may look a little weird, but this is how you would initialize a static variable. So we're gonna set the file name, and we want this to be qdir. And we're just gonna set current path. Maybe help if I didn't have that in quotes. There we go. Separator and there we go. We're just going to call this log.txt. Now we want to set our logging value. So we're going to say logger logging. And we're going to set this to false initially. Because we don't want to start logging until, well, you guessed it, we've actually attached the logger. And we are going to make our queue default message handler. Um, I'm just going to copy and paste that from the previous project. Save us a bit of typing here. So once again, all this does is it calls queue me install message handler with a null pointer. So it gets just the default handler that queue uses. All right, now for attach, this is where we're going to start actually logging. We're going to install the message handler. And we're just going to give it our function. That's just going to point it right to this guy. Whoops, actually, right to this guy right here. That's actually the constructor. Boy, that was a bungle. And then we're going to say logger logging equal true. So we're just going to set that static variable. So really all we're doing is we're actually, let's just in case, we're going to set logging to true and then we're going to install the message handler. And at that point, messages will start flowing into our handler here. Now we've got a bit of typing. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say if logger logging, Then we're going to do something. Now, regardless of whether or not we actually process anything, we want to pass this back to the default message handler, which of course we get up here. 
So if you skip the last video, really what's going on is we get the default message handler, which in this case just prints it out into the standard output. And we're gonna say, hey, install our handler, this guy. But after we've handled it, we need to pass it back to the default message handler or nothing's gonna appear on the screen. It just goes into this black hole because, well, we never put it back. All right, I'm gonna save a bit of typing here through the magic of copy and paste because we already know what this does. So we've just got our switch along with a Q string. See if we can beautify this a little bit. Refractor, Ooh, it's not letting me do it. Auto indent, there it is. That looks a little bit better. And I'm gonna add Q text stream in here. I always forget to add that for some reason. And we need our file. Let's call this Q file file and it's logger. I'm sorry, logging file name. Actually, it's logger. Got a little ahead of myself there. Get our static name there. All right, we're gonna go ahead and actually crank open this file here. And if we're able to open that, that's when we're going to actually process this. There we go. And we've done this before, so I'm just going to grab the code, copy and paste that in, bang. The only real difference is we're using Endel from standard output, or I'm sorry, uh, IO stream. Some people like using Endel, some people don't. I don't think it really matters either way. I'm sure there's some complexity to it, but I've never really run into anything major. And then we're just going to flush this out and close the file. So looking at this code, it's really not a whole lot different. We've got the handler in here. We're just simply going to attach by setting a Boolean value and then installing the message handler to our function. Let's look at our main code here, see if we can actually get this thing to work. So we're going to add QDebug, we're going to add our logger. Grab our file name out of there. We want to go ahead and attach this. So we're going to say logger attach. Once we've done that, the message handler should be installed. So we're going to actually test that. We're going to turn logging off. Oops. Just by setting that to false and through the magic of copy and paste, we can, of course, turn it back on. So really this just simply works because we're saying if we are logging, 
So because we're setting it to false, we're just going to skip right over this. And let's just say finished. Let's save this. Let's go ahead and run it. All right, so we can see there's our file. We've done a test. Don't log this, even though it's displayed in the console. It's displayed simply because when we look at this, that is if we're logging, but because we're not logging, it just jumps right to the default message handler, which of course just spits it right back out into the console for us and then finished. So let's go check this log file. Let's crack open our directory. There's our log. And you can see test and finished. We didn't have the do not log simply because we turned logging off. So everything's working as expected. Now this is the really cool feature of this. Notice how all of this happens outside of our logger class. We can actually add another class in here. Let's add a test. Make this a Q object. And we're just going to add a test in here. Add Q to bug. And you guessed it, really all this thing's going to do is we're going to do a Q warning. Constructor cannot have a return type. Oh, probably because we named this test. Let's name this something else like testing. Because we did actually just make the constructor an accident. There we go. Silly me. There we go. And we could, you know, actually just, why not? build our constructor in there too. Let's go in here and let's include our test class. Let's call our function. Let's save and let's run this. You can see how we have our file, we have tests, do not log this, this will not appear in our log. But then we're also constructing an object, calling a function in that object, and we're finished. Let's go ahead and pull up our log, and let's reload this. Bang, sure enough, we've got everything, including the constructor. As you can see, this is insanely cool. You can do some really awesome things with very minimal effort. And that's what programming is really all about, is just making cool things happen with expending as little effort as possible. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of a video series I have out on Udemy.com. This particular video is a follow-on in the intermediate course, but you can start in Qt Core for beginners. And if we just kind of crack this open, it's got a lot of content that'll take you from an absolute beginner that just knows absolutely nothing from hello world all the way up to what are templates, generics, error handling, and classes. This specific video is part of the Qt Core Intermediate class. This picks right up where the beginner's course left off, and we do things like memory management, collections, working with settings, the file system, a lot of file system compression, serialization, and much, much more.